OK, great. I'll go ahead and, and get started then. Uh, so thanks. Uh, thanks all for joining here. I'm glad to be here. Um, my name is Christina. I'm a PM on the Azure Host OS team here at Microsoft, and I'm co-presenting here with Rob uh, on Kernel Soft Reboot or KSR. Uh, and KSR is basically a feature that enables uh, faster OS updates. Um, KSR is a premium feature which is available on Azure Stack HCI v2 and future versions. Also, quick shout out to uh, Kavya, who used to be the PM for KSR and who helped contribute to these slides. So just a quick run through of KSR and what it is, uh, how it works. So KSR, uh, as mentioned, is a feature in Azure that reduces the time it takes to update the Windows OS. Uh, it was first introduced back in the Windows 8.1 timeframe for Azure, and it's used broadly in the Azure fleet today. Uh, it helps reduce downtime for customer VMs by making these updates a lot faster. The way it does this is by bypassing the traditional BIOS and firmware initialization step. So because of that, it can't be used for reboots or updates that do require firmware initialization. Effectively, this means that for updates to the firmware or to the BIOS, you can't use KSR, but you can use KSR for OS feature updates as well as most driver updates, which don't require a cold reboot. In terms of KSR uh, for HCI, KSR is a mandatory requirement for uh, HCI v2 integrated systems tier products. So there are kind of two tiers, um, the more basic tier is validated nodes, and the more premium tier is uh, integrated systems. And uh, KSR is uh, required for a system to become an integrated system. Uh, this enforcement is done through the HLK or the hardware lab kit which is a test suite that OEMs and IHVs run to make sure that their drivers and that their full systems are working correctly with KSR and uh, you know, correctly execute and uh, come back from a KSR as they should. So kind of as mentioned, uh, KSR on HCI is, is hardware and driver dependent. That's where these HLK tests come in uh, to help validate that it's working correctly. It comes pre-installed, uh, so it can be used with uh, COW or the clusterware update tool. It's not the default type of reboot, uh, but it can be uh, invoked and enabled using clusterware updates which we'll go over in the next couple of slides. So while the default reboot is a cold reboot, uh, there are various ways to utilize KSR through Cal. Uh, so there is the Cal PowerShell plugin in Windows Admin Center, and this enables you to either run a specific update using KSR, uh, always use KSR on a particular cluster, as well as to exclude particular nodes. So if you want to run KSR uh, for a specific update, you can set this attempt soft reboot parameter for that update in particular. Uh, if you want to always invoke KSR on a cluster, you can set a cluster parameter which sets uh, basically sets it to always attempt soft reboot. And if there is a particular node or nodes in the cluster that you want to exclude from KSR, there is a reg key which can be set so that those nodes will continue using a traditional cold reboot instead of KSR for updates. Now we get into 
the exciting part, the, the demo. Uh, so this is a quick demo, basically comparing the performance side by side of a normal reboot versus a KSR. And this, um, just for a bit of context, this was tested on, on a Dell server that was not running any workloads. And we have our KSR on the right and normal reboot on the left. So you'll see the KSR already completed. Now we're speeding up through the normal reboot as several minutes pass. And so around the four minute mark, the normal reboot completes. Well, we have 19 seconds there on the timer on the right for KSR. So why use KSR? Well, I think that demo gives a, a good illustration, right? It's uh, It was 12 times faster. Uh, as mentioned, this was on a single server with no workloads. Um, but yeah, we had 20 seconds for the KSR versus four minutes for a cold reboot. So this is way less downtime for customers, uh, a huge advantage over uh, traditional reboot. So this is something special and really a great feature that you are able to use with HCI. Uh, also worth mentioning is the amount of time saved will be proportional to the memory uh, to the memory size and uh, to the disk size. So as basically as your memory and disk resources increase, uh, the savings becomes even more pronounced. Now we also have some results here to share on the speed ups on a fully loaded cluster and I'll hand it over to Rob to walk through the next couple of slides. Thanks, Christina. So you might be wondering what's the savings? What savings does KSR give you on a fully loaded cluster? And the answer is we've measured it um, on one cluster that was fully loaded. Um, we measured this last night and the number we got was 22.5% savings on a fully loaded cluster. So this was on a four node Dell R730 XD uh, cluster. Um, it, was, uh, it was running uh, with IO going on. So, uh, so what we basically, um, we ran, we did two runs. One was clocked in at 94 minutes. The next run clocked in at 73 minutes uh, with KSR. Um, yes, Kostin. <laughs> so um, I got the impression KSR, you need support in the servers, but the Dell R7030 XD, I have the same notes. They are nearly five years old. So uh, it's also possible with older hardware. Well, technically, you should be doing this measurement on um, systems that are classified as integrated systems in the HCI catalog, right? So yeah. it, to be fully supported, it needs to be an integrated system in the HCI catalog. Um, like, so we, I sort of had to, you know, buy a lot of coffee to uh, get this uh, cluster. Um, and so, you know, I didn't buy enough coffee to get like a 740 cluster. So I got just the 730 and you know, it's a, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, so I, I have I, the same. <laughs> so like, so we're gonna, this actually starts an interesting conversation around what's like, what will, what will KSR work on, right? Um, but the, the answer is it's supported on the integrated systems that are in the catalog. So, um, which is kind of a strange answer, but so you guys can see how I did the math, right? So 93 minus 73 over 94, 
um, times 100. So the so this exactly like Christina's slides, right? This in this average uh, total time reduction of around 3.25 minutes on this particular system, right? On these on these four nodes, right? So now this savings is actually right. What we've done with this end-to-end -end test is it we the timing includes node drain, right? And then the S2D storage job um, for mirror rebuild and then resume. So it includes the entire live migration for all of the 49, uh, 49 um, VMs that were running on that machine, on that cluster, right? So that's that's clear, right? Yeah. Um, just 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 okay. just a question, Rob. So that's 22.5 percent end to end for the entire four node cluster time savings overall. Yes, yeah, yes, that's correct. So I happen to run those 730s uh, and 740s, and I've noticed that there is a big speed up in generations uh, that servers boot nowadays. So I'm wondering how well this will hold up with, let's say, the latest of the greatest hardware. Right. Because it and seems it seems because the feature was delayed a bit in history that you might have this uh, diminishing returns on the investment, so to speak, because the hardware itself is uh, significantly faster. Right, right. And so, and yeah, we, so there's all kinds of, um, there's all kinds of races going on here, right? Um, Didier, you're, you're totally correct. You know, with respect to like, you know, the savings you get on, on modern hardware, right? You, you might not save as much. Um, yeah, and, and you can see that there are many variables here, like sure. what, what exactly the, is the hardware? What exactly is the workload, right? Um, What's your live migration speed like? Yeah, exactly. You know, and so it's so dependent on your on your networking as well, right? Yes, Kostin. Yeah, I, I was thinking uh, uh, you showed a 90, 19 second patch cycle. So maybe it's even possible to pause the VMs and save the memory and restart the node and rerun the VMs. So maybe uh, if you get the time down a bit more, um, we just maybe don't have to move the VMs around and uh, that would make it faster. Not for every VMs maybe, but uh, for the medium and uh, low uh, category. Now I'm missing the word, the medium right. and low VMs. Right. Priority sure. VMs. Right. Yeah, because sa saving the, the, the big ones tends to take quite a while. Right, another, Actually. I mean, another way, it's a little bit like, politically incorrect to talk about like how do you you further improve the speed but another way to do it is you just you wait until three in the morning when no one's using the vms right and you sort of like you know stop your vms back them up right and then you know install your patches yeah. like in other words you take take the maintenance window right um you, yeah. you don't have to do that but if you do it you're it's gonna you know it's extra steps but it, it will like be faster yeah. Right. yeah. Um, okay. So in any case, um, yeah. Just a quick note. Like on the next screen, you'll see that we've used the invoke cow run commandlet, right? Um, so go ahead. And so what this these are screenshots of one of the nodes that's in this four node cluster. Um, and so what's on what's interesting about this is we've used invoke cow run. Um, directly on one of the cluster nodes. And so this is a DCR improvement that's coming in October um, where you can use invoke cow run directly on one of the cluster nodes. You don't need to use it um, only remotely. So yeah, so it's a it's a small thing, but just to note that. Um, so what, what that also means is you don't need an extra machine to upgrade your cluster. Um, so and it will create a cluster role on demand, like for just one run, or how does it work? Exactly, that's what it does. It that's just, awesome. Right. So yeah. So um, we had a lot of feedback uh, on that, and we were very fortunate to get that that feature through um, as a DCR. So that comes in. That's the 11. That's in the 10C package um, for the HCI v1. Um, okay. Um, okay. So really, there's a lot of text here. I don't 
really, you know, expect anyone to read it. I just, for full, full disclosure, just so you can see that I'm just not making numbers up, um, you know, these are the actual measurements we took last night. Um, yeah, and so, and you can see the commands that we that we used right there. So, um, yeah, so this is, yeah, this is really just for full disclosure. Um, uh, yeah, and so then I think it's back to you, Christina. I think I just had these two slides. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, so just to to recap uh, something that that has been mentioned before, that uh, in terms of systems that fully support KSR, this is going to be all of the HCI integrated systems. Currently, this validation is is ongoing, so OEMs are are testing right now uh, for the HCI V2 validation cycle and. You can keep an eye on the HCI catalog for a full list of systems that will be having the support. Uh, validated nodes may also support KSR, however, it's it's not required or guaranteed. Uh, if they want to go off and, and validate KSR, they are uh, welcome to do so. One such example of a, of a system that has actually completed the KSR validation today is the HP ProLiant uh, DL360. This is a, is a validated node, however, it has completed the KSR validation. So this is running with uh, an Intel Xeon pro processor, uh, all flash NVMe, and uh, it has been validated for KSR, which is great. So this is an example of, you know, what kind of hardware we will have that uh, is offering uh, KSR support. And that's yes. all we had. Any any questions? Yes, actually, I have one or two. So I wonder why not require KSR for every validated nodes uh, and only for the uh, from the integrated system because it's a feature people are looking forward to and uh, you can have new new Azure Stack HCI deployments where it, where it will not work. And give, can you give us some insight which kind of devices will not work? Or where's the problem? I think the answer there is probably just around the the burden of validation and not jumping into requiring a, something like this to be to be validated across the board, especially as we just have started to introduce this feature in uh, HCI that there is a significant burden on uh, driver developers and OEMs to do this level of validation. And uh, I don't know if Rob has anything to add there. So yeah, not not really. Just to say, um, yeah, we we welcome the MVP community to you know try KSR, and uh, you know we we're, we're looking forward to your feedback. Um, that that would be just really awesome. Um, so yeah, so. We have two more two more guys who want to to ask questions. For, uh, for, uh, Jaromir, you had a fair share already. So first Helmut and then Jaromir. Yeah, just want to ask if in the KSR validation in the meantime also uh, the driver update extensions are uh, tested because KSR is nice if you do it by hand, but if you do it automatically, it can terribly fail with the with the plugins into class they were updating because uh, KSR delivers a bit different flags and uh, the software doesn't think that the update was successful and reduced the update. And my question is if this is in the validation run in the meantime. So I think I think the general rule is like with KSR we have to be a little bit careful, right? We um, KSR does not apply to every single update, right? Um, that's so. One problem is we have to be very careful, right? So as mm -hmm. Christine said, it's not for like BIOS or UFI 
um, it's not really for firmware, right? Because that requires a, a hard reboot, a full reboot. Um, mm -hmm. The problem is that we have some vendors that will say things like, well, like, you know, first you install the firmware and then you install the driver, right? One after the other and a reboot is required, right? Um, so it, we have a situation where it depends on what you're installing and also it depends on the, um, yeah, it depends on what you're installing and also it depends on the vendor. Yeah. Okay, Jaromir. Okay. Okay, so what will happen if I'll try attempt KSR on non-validated system? It will just fail KSR and successfully reboot and apply updates, but the reboot will be normal or it will be some blue screen or what we will see. If you'll just enable it, you know, everywhere and just, you know, let it, okay, decide if the KSR will be done or not. So, okay, Yarmir, um, I had a network problem um, in the first part of your question, but I think you're asking, can you ask it again just to? Yeah, if you uh, if you will attempt KSR all the time, even on the non-validated systems, like you have it, your XD730, and you will reboot the machine, what will happen? It will, you know, attempt to do, and if it will fail, it will just normally reboot, or it will just go blue screen or something? Okay, so. Is it safe? The Okay, so we think, that it's relatively safe, right? Um, so we don't expect that KSR will do any like violent damage to your clusters, right? We, okay. We expect the same. Right, <laughs> but, right, so if, you know, if you instruct it to, if you instruct Cal to do a KSR reboot, a soft reboot, Cal will try, right, to do a soft reboot. Right, Cal will try to work with the KSR component to do that. Um, however, um, if there's a if it if it if, if there's a failure, right, then we think that it will go for a full reboot as a fallback condition, right. So the worst case we think is a is a full reboot, right. It can't. So you say you do do a KSR, save me those four minutes, but Cal for some reason can't do it or the node can't do it. Okay, so then you do go into a full reboot. Okay, now, um, so we don't really think there's any harm. It's just that it's extra time for you and extra hassle, right? We don't think, we absolutely do not think there's a data loss possibility or a data corruption possibility. However, we do know that there are occasions when the node might blue screen, right? A blue screen is a possibility, right? And if it happens, then, you know, it you, it, it's just normal, right? It's it's part of it's a function of a reboot. Um, you just handle it like you do any other blue screen situation. But the machine uh, is suspended uh, anyway, so who cares, right? It should be fully drained, right? You shouldn't be doing anything. You should be okay, right? So um, if in the case of a blue screen, but this is also an area where we're very sensitive, right? It turns out that KSR is hard to debug, like because we're trying to save time during the reboot and there it's difficult to do all the correct logging when the operating system's not running. So we have this, we have this interesting situation where actually it's hard to diagnose KSR, right? So that's why we want to restrict KSR to the integrated systems, right? So it's really, it's a little bit selfish, right? We, we want to say oh, it's like predictive, well, right? So you know how it will behave, right? Right. We, it's much better predictable, right? But there KSR is going to this feature is going to raise a lot of questions like so like Helmut was asking, like we I expect all the time for people to say, hey, Rob, I want to I want to install this. Can I use KSR or not? The answer is going to be like, OK, well, you know, is it BIOS? Is it UFI? Right. Is it firmware? Then the answer is no. Right. You know, then the next question is like, okay, what machine are you using? Are you using an integrated system? And then if the answer is yes, you are, then the answer is like, okay, well, you can try KSR, right? But in the end, you are not blocking any non-certified hardware from even trying. No, we there's not. Can, there's can not test and play at our heart's content at our own there's, risk. And, yeah. There's not, there's not a, like a green list of like approved hardware, like in, in the software, right? It will try. Have you considered um, that or? 
Um, <laughs> well, yes, um, we have considered that, but you know, um, people people don't always listen to like what what I want. Um, shocking, shocking, Bob. Shocking. I know, crazy, right? Um, look, Carlson, I think you might have a question. Yes, I have. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so is there a possibility to recognize on their update if it's car KSR uh, uh, appro approved or if K KSR would uh, uh, would not uh, do the hard uh, boot because it's depending on the update I understood. So is there a flag somewhere or you will integrate a flag in the update so we know if we install these updates, KSR would usually happen and not a full reboot? Or is this just, oh, we need a full reboot and it happens, or we don't need a full reboot and will not happen? So this is, okay, so this is an area of intense discussion on the team. Right? Okay, so you don't fix we, it yet. We, right, so we want to put, we want to basically put a reboot hint or tag Right. Um, we want to put some. We want to associate some metadata with the update itself. Right. So wherever the update is coming from, if it's coming from Windows Update or if it's coming from like the hardware vendor, right. Wherever it's coming from, we want to really associate and put a tag on this and say, yeah, you know what, you can you can do use a KSR with this. Um, you know, here's here's how we should behave. Here's your reboot behavior for this. You know, for this um, particular uh, package. Right. So. Um, that's what we want. The problem is it's expensive, right? Um, and we couldn't get it, we couldn't do that, we couldn't add the metadata um, approach um, in time for this release. So we chose to go ahead and uh, use it uh, without the metadata hint. Okay. Um, so everything is, we have to use sort of like documentation and communication to, to determine when we can use KSR. But we're, hope, okay, we're cool. hoping that we still get enough good feedback on this feature. Mm -hmm. Manfred, you had a question, right? Yes. I, he's coming, he's coming. I, I have to switch between two uh, two uh, setups because uh, Teams uh, is struggling with the length of our session. We, we are with the length but, of our presentation um, is, is too much for Teams. So there, there are some problems are coming up switch. after 10 hours. <laughs> oh, I will switch. Yeah, my question is regarding the... Um, the update path we discussed before your uh, session, Rob, uh, where you mentioned that for Windows Server we have an N minus um, two, but for some services N minus three might work, but it's not tested and so it's not fully supported. Uh, did I get this right? Um, so let's go to slide, Christina. Could you advance to slide 16? Or is it 15? Yes, here it is. 15. Slide 15. Sorry, one up. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, so the answer is like okay, it's we support n minus two. We have this interesting case for server 2022 where some roles can upgrade from 2012 R2 directly to 2022. So it's technically three versions, but mm -hmm. we're still writing the documentation for that. And um, we're still trying to figure that out exactly. Um, like what, you know, um, so yeah. So we, we like, so for example, we don't IIS. Um, we'll upgrade perfectly, right? We know, you know, that, you know, there are, there are other roles that upgrade no problem with three versions, but we, since we're still writing the documentation, I don't have the list of all the roles. Okay. Is it is it because IIS didn't change from 2012 or two? <laughs> Just teasing you. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, but Rob, this means it's definitely not N minus four. So we know server 2012 is out. Is this correct? Because the reason why I'm asking, uh, there are several slides that were sh shared by Microsoft Germany, so public slides that say n minus four and they're wrong um <laughs> those were er, right those were early slides I, i'm very familiar with those slides yeah um, that was our early proposition like we were trying to uh we were trying to think of everything we possibly could to think to like get customers onto the latest version of windows server 
mainly for security reasons, right? We want the, them to be running on the most secure, best platform ever. And so, you know, we had all kinds of ideas. Let's support N minus four. Let's, um, you know, let's let's really heavily test the major applications, right? And, and do compatibility testing. Um, but a lot of, there are a lot of other priorities that come up and some of these plans um, have to change. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because the interesting thing is based on this uh, information I I got here in in Germany. I started testing and I was let's say very successful. So the uh, things worked. I never expected they would work, but I started to test it because uh, somebody said, uh, "Oh yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this is in there." <laughs> but uh, we should ensure to have the correct information there because. Uh, I told these uh, guys at Microsoft Germany, um, as far as I know, it's N minus two. And they asked some other persons and then the feedback was, no, it's N minus four. And so I said, okay, I tested a little bit and uh, I had a lot of roles that I could successfully migrate. Um, but it's not supported. This is important. Yeah. That's where you have to, right, we have to be very careful with what's supported versus what might yeah. work. Right. Also, um, be very careful, Manfred, because um, a lot of times the final changes are made only in the GA build, right? And so it's the yep. GA build that's supported, and that's where the final changes are. So it's possible that you can do an N minus four um, upgrade on an early build, but then you get the GA build, and guess what? They've removed they've removed the transition from the transition table, okay. right? So. It's, it be very, we just have to be very careful here. If you have any questions, I'm happy to get to a meeting with um, our, our, any of our colleagues. Um, yeah, we can, we can discuss it, right? Yeah. If, especially yeah. if it's a problem. Great. Uh, I, have, I have something uh, uh, cluster aware updated related. If you, so it's very nice in uh, Windows Admin Center when you have a uh, Azure Stack HCI cluster, you have this nice update button uh, uh, down there. And I recognized, and I, I was really surprised, if you do that, the cow role is installed, of course, and uh, uh, it, it, uh, it schedules an update for every uh, third Tuesday of the month at 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, and if you don't know that as a customer, you have you have suddenly uh, an automatically running patch uh, one week after the updates came out. So it would be nice uh, if we had something in Windows Admin Center when you install the cow role that it asks you uh, which time do you want to have this automatically run or uh, or even that the customers are aware where you write though it's installing an automatically task because a lot of customers are not comfortably uh, patching the cluster a week after the patches came out yeah it's understandable and you're correct um, we have we're working with the windows admin center team to change the the behavior. Um, That's cool. So Windows Admin Center, the way it works with Cal today, it uses two commandlets and it, it basically sets up this um, this reoccurring task right, for the update, right? Now we're asking them to change that and use invoke Cal run, um, yeah. which will work w more smoothly and it won't leave this dangling uh, scheduled task, right? So we're so we're working with them. We've implemented the DCR in the HCI v1 10c. Um, it's also there in. It's going to be there in also in H, the HCI uh, v2. Um, so, uh, but yes, we're that work to change WAC to change the the PowerShell commandlet that it uses. That is still forthcoming. So, but okay, that, at, least you, at least you know it, and you are thinking uh, that's great because I was really surprised. And I, uh, we killed the class. We killed the volume at a customer uh, during the update process, <laughs> and okay. we were left with the cluster. Two nodes were updated, and the others were not. So, uh, uh, was surprising uh, in a stretch cluster. Okay, other questions from our audience or from our uh, speakers. 
I'll just tell you, Carson, the IIS 10 has changed in 2022. Can now serve <laughs> websites over quick. <laughs> OK, just so saying, I have, just saying something has changed. Something has changed. OK, will, so I have a question from the audience. Will KSA, KSR come to Windows 11 or later versions? You always can hope, right? Windows 11, like in what? Like form? the client, like the client. client. Of course, people people like to dream. They see something in server or in Azure Stack. It will also not come to Windows Server, I presume. So it's it's an Azure Stack HCI feature alone, right? Correct. That's correct. We don't have plans at this time to and Azure. expand it beyond that. So like, right, so Christina's right. So we don't have any plans yet. If clearly if it goes well, if there's demand for this feature, um, then there's a strong case for bringing KSR to Windows Server more generally. But, you know, on the other hand, like if we if we get a lot of negative feedback, you know, then there, there's a case against bringing it into a more, more mainstream. Yeah. Actually, oh, actually, have you have you tried doing it with virtual machines just for fun to see if that makes a huge difference there, or did you not even try? Yeah, because they only need twenty seconds, and now you would have three. Two or seconds. One, yeah, why not? <laughs> reboot, reboot a VM at the speed of a container, just just for fun. Oh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's reboot is really fast anyway, so yeah, I know, I know, I know, but still, so. yeah. it's going to always yeah, be faster. <laughs> if you if you can knock off. 90% of the reboot time of VM, why not? Yeah. I have another question from the audience. Um, is this the same technology in Windows Server 2022 data center Azure edition for fast reboots? I think it's not fast reboots in Windows in, in the Azure edition. It's uh, it's patching without reboots, right? It's a completely different right, piece. Right. So don't right. So this is this feature is KSR, right? And the questionnaire, the questionnaire is probably asking a question about hot patching. Yeah, right? it's, they're different technologies. Yeah. Right? They're, they're they're related in that, like you know, in what we're trying to do is we're trying to like m minimize the total downtime for, you know, for a server or for a cluster node. But so they're they're sort of related in that respect. But they are they're different teams, and they're um, you know different different ways of, go, of going about it. Right. So just to be clear, like like um, as Christina said, KSR is a synthetic driver that allows a faster reboot. Hot patching, it's basically they've rewritten the updates and they've, they've, they're using, um, a, they're, they're very, being very clever about the way that you replace binaries during an upgrade to prevent a reboot. So there was another question. Um, I, I messed it up already. Where is it? Uh, it was uh, someone asked, uh, are there any other new uh, features in COW? So cluster we're updating. So the feature update the is the new feature, isn't it? But you are able to run feature update in 20H2 and it was enabled in one of the cumulative updates. I think right. August cumulative update or something like that, right? right? We have multiple. Um, yeah, we have multiple ways to do this. Um, yeah, so there there those are the main um, updates. Uh, the 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 fact that you can do a feature update, that's that's huge. And um, yeah, the you know the that's the main thing, right? So um, let's see, uh, Christina, um, on your deck, can you advance to um, slide eighteen? Okay, so thank you. So basically, we on the cow team, we've been very focused on how to upgrade your cluster, right? And so we've been, you know, we've been very, very focused on, on making sure that customers can be successful in going from the HCI 20H2 to the 21H2. 
And you might have seen this slide before. Um, we presented this at the partner forum. Um, this, so essentially what we want is we want customers to be able to use the Windows Admin Center and be successful with WAC and Cow together. But the next scenario down, if that doesn't work or if they're more comfortable with PowerShell, we have PowerShell and we have improvements to the Cow PowerShell. Later um, this year or early next year, we'll ship a special um, executable um, with our partners in the fundamentals team called the Aura tool. And the Aura tool will allow a partially connected um, system to work. So um, if you if you have a, an HCI system that's not connected to the internet, but you need to shuttle the files back and forth um, with like a thumb drive, then, then the Aura tool, you can use that to shuttle the updates back and forth. So you can say, hey, cluster, what do you need? Then you take that information, the metadata, um, you take it over to your laptop and you say, hey, Aura tool, go fetch what I need. And you put it on the thumb drive and then you put it back right to the HCI system, right? And so that's line three there. Um, then there are other scenarios where if you have the media, um, so scenario four and five here in this table, if you have the media, then you can use the media as well. Like you can basically have cow call setup.exe. Um, the only difference between four and five is four, it's using a little bit fancier um, algorithm. Um, five is, is using like, like no no algorithm, right? It's it's really very brutal. Um, finally, there's a new option in sconfig in the HCI. Um, so option six um, comma three, and this also allows you to do a feature update, right? So now in this case, the you have an administrator who you essentially has to manually drain the nodes, right? Just doing everything that Cow does. Right, you have to drain the node, but then you can use sconfig to upgrade the node, and then you can just resume the node, right? So, but that's so, yeah. So essentially, these are this is our these are pathways or mechanisms for uh, customers to upgrade to HCI. And I have a feedback for you on the step six. I tried to extract the way the sconfig does it. He's, you know. I'm not sure now how he's doing it exactly, but I try to invoke it remotely from the remote machine. Imagine you have a cluster, you would like to uh, install a feature update to one of the nodes and you don't want to log in into the node itself. Yep. You would like to invoke it with the invoke command. I, I was trying credit SSP, I was trying virtual account, nothing worked. You have to really log in and say, I want to do this. Right. Uh, so so for, the, for the future, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I just to let you know that this this is something I faced. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a challenge for us. So I mean, I understand. Right, cool. So like you guys. Uh, <laughs> so I, I tried the third time. So uh, so this was also a very informative and great session. I really appreciate it. And Manfred does it too. He he gave his sum up, and that's very rare. So thank you, Christina and Rob, for the session. Um, it's really late here in Germany, and it was nice, to, Rob, to see you again.